Hello, my name is Avon Zarles, pronouns she, her, and today I'm going to talk about how to build multi-architectural Docker images. We're going to use Docker Build X as well as a GitHub Actions workflow in order to build our images in the cloud. No prior experience is necessary to be able to follow along with this tutorial. So what is Docker Build X? It's actually a built-in part of the Docker CLI that comes installed automatically with Docker Desktop. Normally, you might use Docker Build, pass some parameters in order to build your images, but that makes some assumptions by default, like it only builds for the architecture of the machine running that Docker command. If you want to build for a different architectural platform or to build for multiple platforms, you're going to need to pass some additional parameters. And to do that, you use the CLI Docker build X instead. This is actually behind the scenes, what Docker build is using by default. So going into build X kind of unlocks those advanced settings. So why should you go to the trouble of making a multi-architectural Docker image? Well, first off, you want to have portability. You want to be able to have your code deploy and run in as many different places as possible. And if you're doing something that is specific to one type of architecture, you don't want to have to remake your entire Docker image and change your files in order for it to then work with a different platform. You want that image to be able to go into whatever image repository you're sending it to and have as many different distributions as it needs to be able to deploy on, say, Linux ARM64, Windows ARM64, uh, Linux AMD, whatever uh, platforms you would like to target. You can also do some performance optimizations. Within your Docker file, you can have conditional code that is only triggered when working in certain architectures in order to be able to not just get the types of requirements you need, but enable or disable certain types of feature sets so you can get the most performance out of whatever architecture happens to be running your image. And all of this is going to help you be far more future-proofed because wherever you want to deploy in the future, whatever cloud provider you're using, you can then work with their architecture and their system and be able to have a choice then, not just which ones are compatible with my system, but hey, which architecture is going to provide me the most value, the most cost-effective, the best performance, and you can worry about that instead of worrying about if your code's going to work or not. So let's talk about what you need in order to be able to follow along with this tutorial. First off, you need to be running Docker Engine 19.03 or newer. As mentioned before, if you have Docker Desktop for Windows or Mac OS, Docker Build X already comes pre-installed. No extra configuration is necessary. If you have Linux, you do need to install a Docker Build X plugin package from the package repository. But then once you do so, you'll have Docker Build X access on your CLI. You can also use the command Docker Build X install to set Docker Build X as the default builder. And that makes the uh, equivalent of doing Docker Build X build just Docker build. So then when you run Docker build commands, you'll actually be using Build X if you find that more convenient. For the purposes of our tutorial today, we're obviously going to need a Docker image. So let's make a really, really, really simple one. Uh, I have here a two line Docker file, one that defines that we are going to base this off of a standard Ubuntu image. And the second line runs an echo hello world command, just so that we do something with it. Um, you'll note that when we're importing on that first from line, we do need to add the dash dash platform and put in the predefined variable target platform. And what that'll do is that when it goes to wherever the Ubuntu image is stored, it'll request one of the architecture that we pass in with that platform command. So if you're using your Docker file as part of this and whatever application that you have, whatever image you want, just add that dash dash platform into the from and you should be good. Uh, obviously, what the source that you're importing from has to have support 
for that target architecture. Something like Ubuntu has a lot of support for a lot of platforms, but um, keep that in mind depending on if you want to be able to uh, import for, say, both Linux and Windows images or something else like that. Once you have your Docker file, you can build your Docker image locally with the CLI command docker build x build and then pass in the platform and put in a comma separated value list of the different architectures you would like to build for. So if you want to, like I have an example here, Linux slash ARM64, I could also put comma, you know, Linux slash AMD and be able to build for multiple architectures in one command and it will run through your Docker file for each target platform and build that image. Now, for me, if there's a process that is a core part of your build and you're having to run it locally on your development machine versus having the option of running it in the cloud, I'll take the cloud option every single time for a lot of different reasons. Being able to have your builds go in the cloud adds a lot of consistency and helps a lot with problem solving because if I'm running my build locally on my machine, you know, I could mistype a CLI command. I could forget to pass a parameter or tag something correctly. If you put that as a code process, define in a YAML file, put it in the cloud and it's run there, it's going to be consistent every single time. And as a developer, I don't even have to think about it. I can just modify my code. I'm like, great, I want to make a new build. Let me push it to the cloud and it will just happen for me in the background while whatever other work I'm doing locally. And if you're using GitHub, GitHub Actions is a great way to do this. And I've written a sample YAML file that shows you exactly what you need to do to do these Docker build X multi-architectural builds as part of your GitHub Actions workflow. Let me walk you through that example right now by switching over to Visual Studio Code. So I have here my Visual Studio Code open with the Docker file, exactly as we talked about it before. Simple two lines from a Ubuntu image. We put the target platform and we echo hello world. Let's look at the GitHub Actions workflow. In a .github workflows folder, we have a YAML file called build that defines a new build and push Docker image pipeline. This first part right here defines when this will run. So whenever there is a new push to the main branch, it will run this as well as it will run on pull requests for any branch. We define a job here, which has an environment variable of the image name. I just have the example here. We want to change that. We can tweak that. We're going to run this build on the Ubuntu latest image for the GitHub Actions workflow. And then we have a series of steps here that will run. The check out the code base is pretty standard. I also have one here that will set the image name based off of the environment variable above, uh, as well as the Docker username, which is an environment variable I have set in my GitHub uh, repository. So it's able to access that in the vars name space, vars.docker username. You'll see down here, I also have a secret set for the Docker password, but we'll get there in a moment. Yeah. The next step here is we extract the uh, Docker image metadata based off of a GitHub action workflow that is built in and we can use that metadata when we're uploading the image to be able to get some interesting information. We then log in and authenticate to Docker Hub, which is the repository that we're going to upload our image to, using that username and password mentioned a second ago that we've already defined in advance in our GitHub repository. And then we need to do a setup docker build x command. As mentioned, this is actually running on a Linux machine, and so it doesn't have build x by default, but there is a convenient GitHub action docker slash setup build x action command that we can run, and everything will be configured and ready to go for us. And likewise, there's also one for building and pushing the image. 
So we can run that without having to define any of the CLI commands ourselves and just pass in what parameters we want. The context is where our image is, so we have the root of the repository right there. And for platforms, I'm going to build for AMD Linux AMD64 and Linux ARM64, so two different architectures. And this push value right here is a Boolean value of if we want to push the image or not. And there's a nifty piece of little code right here that checks to see if this is a pull request. If it is a pull request, this is false. So it will build the image. You can see in the pull request whether it was able to successfully build the image or not, but it doesn't push it to the repository unless this is a build that is not done in a pull request, aka one onto the main branch. We use the metadata from the previous steps to put some tags and annotations, um, as well as set some other values right here for uh, getting proper metadata on that image as it will end up into Docker. So once we have all of this ready, we are good to go. Just as an example here, I'm going to do a random tweak and make this Hola Mundo instead for Spanish. I will then commit that change directly to the main branch just for demo purposes and push that to the cloud. Now I can hop over here to uh, github.com where I have the repo already set up and configured. And if I go to my actions, you can see that new push is already in the process of being built right now. And we can look at it as it's doing that. We've run the image name set, we've got the metadata, and now we're off to build. And in just a couple of seconds, this will be built and ready to go. I can also show you here in the settings, I can scroll down to secrets and variables actions. And this is where I have defined our secret Docker password, as well as the not so secret Docker username values. And just by defining them here, they're accessible in our GitHub actions workflow, which looks like it ran successfully. And now you can see here on hub.docker.com, I have that image with the name that I specified, the new push from that change that I just modified, and there are two available architecture options. This image is ready to go and ready to be deployed wherever I need to have it deployed. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're able to learn something from this video. If you want to be able to do some more learning, I would highly recommend you join the ARM Developer Program. In addition to all sorts of other resources and community features you can get there, you have access to a ton of different learning paths. In fact, this very video was based off of one of those learning paths talking about using DockerX to build multi-architectural images. If you have any questions about this, run into any issues, please put a comment below and I'll happily help you out, as well as if you have any suggestions for future videos that we should make. Thank you again. See you next time.